Whereabouts are you? This is, is this the bunker? Yeah, um, I, uh, you know, I loved photographing William at the bunker, and I, when he was in New York, or when we were both in New York, as opposed to other, you know, as opposed to other cities, we uh, worked together, and I would always shoot him at the bunker, always. And um, uh, we'll get to it later in another image, but there were there was a lot about the bunker that recommended it as a photographic lo uh, location mm. that was very appealing for a photographer. And so if you want me to talk about this particular image with of William with the cane, uh, I'll, t I'll talk, I'll give you some, some of the backstory about this picture. Um, uh, the first thing I think of when I see this picture is the painting to William's right by Brian Geisen. Because I remember in the bunker, the only framed art in the bunker was by Brian Geisen. There was a there was a beautiful painting by Brian over William's typewriter, and he always spoke about it with pride. And um, uh, he um, it also makes me think of my my best friend at the time, who was Carl Apfelschnitt, who collaborated with William on a book about mummies. And uh, Carl and I were a member of this group that would hang around the bunker. And I was the only woman there. And Carl was my anchor because I was such good friends with him. And it made sense for me to, to be part of this group that was, exclus was uh, exclusively male. Uh, and the group included James Grauerholtz, John Giorno, Iris Silverberg, and Carl Appleschnitt and me. And I would bring a portable strobe with me whenever I went to the bunker to be with these men and plan on shooting William. And uh, we would, you know, it was, it was informal. I usually, except for a couple of shoots, it was pretty informal and it was very kind of extemporaneous. And I was just always prepared to shoot him. And uh, he would always talk to me about rep weaponry and how anything could be made into a weapon and he showed me how you could put a salt shaker in a sock and he whirled it around his head to show me that you know this was a well sociologically speaking a make do mm -hmm. and then i remember one time he gave me a can of pepper spray called sentinel and he said you know kate i want you to have this because in my opinion this is the best pepper spray for your protection and um you know, all I can say about this picture as well is how many people have a target in their apartment. So uh, does that sort of ap appeal to you in regard to that image? Yeah, of course. And, I mean, he's quite posed in a way. He's holding the cane in two hands. How how much of a willing model was he? Were, would you direct him or was he quite, um, you know, imp was he improvising in terms of what you shot? Um. Well, um... I was going to tell you something, actually, and thinking about it, you know, um, we didn't need to talk, and we hardly talked at all, and uh, there was just something very real about him, and that, and I could that I could feel, and that appealed to me. And um, does that answer your question? Yeah, I guess so. So you didn't feel like so it wasn't a case that it was you telling him what to do. It was more of a connection between the two of you he kind of read what you wanted and and you felt like you got that from him yeah i mean uh it was it was it was it was a it was a, it was a once in a lifetime experience to shoot william burroughs yeah and uh i'm not uh, intimating that i'm the only photographer that experienced this this uh but i am saying that i am one of many who really he was uh a great subject and uh and uh, he really, there. I, I, I would say that people talk about William's voice a lot. And mm -hmm. um, I would say that for me, if anything cued me in regard to col uh, our collaboration, um, nothing is more personal and indicative of one's character than their speaking voice. And he was always very helpful to me and when he was just talking to me. Um, but, you know, I never told him what to do. And he just always knew, and he would just give me these great. I mean, we were just collabor. We were just collaborators, and um, 
I would I I wouldn't dream of telling William Burroughs what to do. <laughs> and he wouldn't listen to anyone, I wouldn't think. I, I don't think he would. Yeah. He's pretty self possessed. Yeah. And so do you think he was quite well aware of what the image that he was presenting you with and in control of that? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. 